So here's about 10 grams or so of that tightly rolled oolong, the Dongding Triple Blossom. What we're going for is roughly a quarter to a third of the way full of little kernel loose leaf tea for these small teapots like this. So now we're bringing our water back up to a boil here. Steam is rising. Now we're gonna come away with our first infusion and this is the, the controversial first infusion. Drink or not to drink? Who dares ask the question? Really, it doesn't matter, it's up to you. This, this first infusion is, is so essential, in a sense, to, to brewing a perfect cup of oolong tea. One of the reasons is that it helps get the leaves in the right position for what will be the critical infusions coming up here. So, in a sense, it's a, lot, it's a lot like when we get our coffee to bloom, so to speak. So now this is really gonna be a pretty strong infusion. I think I put a little bit too much tea in here, which, uh, you know, many of you are probably kind of snickering about. Many of you that know me and know that that's how, what probably you think always happens when I brew tea. But, it's in fact not the case. I always put the right amount of tea in, except when I put too much in or if I put too little in. And those two things can happen too. Now we have a nice pour. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and tilt my vessel upright and then tilt it downward again. And one more time, upright and downward. That's pretty good. We got mostly all of it out there. It's pretty important to get the all that water out, all that tea out. Now I remove the lid. It's very hot, but it's still looking like a pretty reasonable amount of tea in there because it hasn't risen all the way up here to the top yet. Now I'm gonna. Ch I'm just gonna catch up with myself here. So give me a minute. I have to drink all this tea. See, see how this first first infusion, the one that some people don't drink. Wow! Oh my gosh! The aroma is so beautiful. It's almost like roses, but oh. Bear with me, I'm gonna drink all this tea. Nuts. Quite literally, the flavor is, is reminiscent of nuts. But but just like freshly roasted nuts with, with roses, if that makes sense. Part of it, part of what's making this tea so great is the is the storage. It's the the transformation the transformation. We're on seven years now, so that's a pretty definitive markation of transformed tea in the in the aged oolong. Seven years is typically where you have your first flavor, your flavor deviation or, or sort of directional uh, flavor direction is defined a bit more. Very strong flavor, ending in bread, rye, caramel. Ultimately, and we just say it's tea. What does it taste like? It's so familiar. What's that taste? What's that flavor? Oh, I can just I can almost put my finger on it. Tea. Right now, I'd probably buy this over Bitcoin. Fifteen bucks per ounce, or fifteen dollars a Bitcoin. It's a tough call. But 
I think this is going to bring you a lot more joy. I mean, it's bringing me more joy. <laughs> and if you do buy, if you do choose to buy the entire um, 300 gram or 600 gram package, uh, for example, 600 gram package uh, is the one that we just opened. Um, then if you don't open it, you can, it is a, a speculation. You can carry that into the future and it won't lose value as long as you keep it in a place that's a good storage place. Just trying to relate to y'all, all 26 viewers. All right, so now that we got a little bit of brew experience under our belt, remove the lid. Any questions? Oh yes, you in the front. Where did I get this? I think my my mom got it for me. I don't know, I hate shopping for clothes. Gonna drink some tea. Ah, velvet. Pink. Like a pink rose. Some birds flew in and tore the rose to shreds. Some squirrels that had just been eating acorns dashed through and grabbed pieces of that rose and dusted it into the piney pine cones, the pine forest, the floor. Um, And the bird picked it up and carried it up to the uh, seventh layer of the honeycomb. We Today we got to use our Ishin teapot, our tea boat. We got to use a tea scoop, a waste bowl, tea pick, the pick stand. We got to use a porcelain tray and a sharing pitcher. Also three aroma cups, three aroma cup brew style. So now we have some aroma cups, sharing pitcher, Ishing teapot, drinking cup. In this case, these, this is a really neat set. It's a aroma cup, tea drinking cup, matching cup set. And this porcelain is super high quality. It's so weird to look at because it's not the thinnest porcelain I've ever used, although this drinking lip is insanely thin. And it just curves and like rests over and sits on the top of your lip and says, hello, this is the best cup you've ever used. It's really crazy. So, um, you know, that's why now we're gonna take that sip, a cup like that, the air entering the mouth, the experience is very different than say another, a different cup. Not to say, I mean, the craftsmanship on these are just, are just unbelievable. It's understated. It's almost hard to tell. Not really that pretty even. I would have to venture and say kind of ordinary, but the usage of these is extraordinary. How Taiwan they say John. John means like super, Super awesome. That second infusion came off really nice with the uh, just a very quick infusion here. I'm gonna do the same with the third, probably about a 10 to 15 second infusion or so. There's so many different ways to brew tea. This leaf is fully expanded. And the, the leaf has risen to just below the lid level here, about like so about like so on this pot. And so I would say that was a perfect amount of leaf to use. I mean, that's like where I like to get it. I like it to be, you know, in here. It's not too tightly packed inside. 